Welcome to the Marketing Smarts Live show by Marketing Profs and the Marketing Smarts Podcast, where we dive into B2B news, resources, valuable guest content, and much, much more each and every week. If you're a B2B marketer looking for a place to learn, keep up to date, and have some fun along the way, grab a beverage, notepad, or at least some style of writing utensil, and welcome to the show. Hello to all my Marketing Smarts Live viewers today. I'm super excited to bring you episode 20 of the Marketing Smarts Live show. That's right. This week's topic, well, it's all about tips, tricks, and hacks for B2B email marketing success. So if you're ready to get your learn on, buckle up and let's get ready to rock and roll. Hey, I'm your boy, George B. Thomas, speaker, trainer, catalyst, and host of this here show. The Marketing Smarts Live Show, as well as the Marketing Smarts Podcast found on your favorite podcast app. Our guest clips today are brought to you by none other than Michael Barber. Michael's career began at Mighty Interactive, the agency founded by Jay Bear himself, and went on to hold leadership roles in strategy and planning at Sitewire, Nomadic Agency, and Cohen before establishing his own consultancy, Barber and Hewitt. In late 2017, Barber and Hewitt joined Godfrey, one of the largest B2B agencies, and Michael was named one of Marketo's Fearless 50, an award that recognizes the top marketers around the globe driving fearless marketing and digital transformation. Over the last year, he has worked with brands like MeUndies.com, Johnson & Johnson, Church & Dwight, Haas Avocado, and Magnet Life. Now remember, the clips of Michael Barber today are pulled from the Full Marketing Smarts podcast episode. And if you want to listen to the full interview with Michael Barber and myself, make sure you tune in to the Marketing Smarts podcast link in the full description well, when the live is over, the links will be there. All the right links in all the right places at all the right times. Now, in this episode, again, I'm talking with Michael Barber about tips, tricks, and hacks for B2B email marketing success. That's right. We're starting out the year with email marketing for you, the B2B professional. Why? Because email can be one of the most powerful marketing channels in your marketing arsenal, but only if done correctly is email done we've all heard it yes yes it is bad email is dead but great email marketing is alive and well my friends and to be honest that topic that question what do you say to those naysayers shouting that email marketing is dead was one of the first questions i dug in with michael and here is what michael had to say about that topic of email being dead? I mean, I'd say two things. One, that we've been having this conversation about the death of email for 15-ish years at this point. And what we've continued to see, especially through the last two and a half years of this pandemic and, and you know, post-pandemic, if you consider that we are in a post-pandemic or endemic period of COVID, is that Email continues to drive incredible success for marketers who do it well. You need only look at the stats that are out there. I'm not a big uh, individual on saying, you know, it drives X number of the ROI or conversions for organizations. There's plenty of that research that are out there. Um, I would say that first. I would say the second thing is, is just consider your audiences, right? If we know, and this is particularly true inside of a B2B uh, audience, a B2B subscription list, but the vast majority of them make decisions and buying decisions and insights around the content they see inside of their inbox, because that is where they're spending the vast majority of their professional time uh, outside of meetings um, and actually doing the work is responding to email is a place where we can meet B2B buyers um, in a place where they're very receptive to information. And just the stats speak for themselves at the end of the day. We can continue to have this argument that email is dead. It might change and evolve, but it has not died by any stretch of the imagination. Did you hear that? Listen, something cannot be dying for 15 years, ladies and gentlemen. Email continues to drive success when done well. But the gem in this section was, are you paying attention to your audience? Do you understand how much time they spend in their inbox outside of meetings and their day-to-day -day attention? So how are you getting their attention in the place they spend copious 
amounts of time. Mm-mm-mm. Copious amounts of time I am in my inbox. Let's just be honest. And you know you are too. And the problem with it dying or being successful is that word attention. By the way, are you getting their attention? How are you getting their attention? Put that in the chat pane. Let me know on Twitter. One of the two. Use the hashtag, hashtag MPB2B. And of course, tag me using at George B. Thomas if you're using the Twitters. But how are you getting attention in the inbox? How are you getting your audience's attention in the inbox? Yes, I am beating this to death. That's the question. Let us know. We'll get back to Michael Barber and his thoughts on tips, tricks, and hacks for B2B email marketing success. But first, I have to ask, are you part of the Marketing Profs community? If not, become part of the Marketing Profs community by heading over to mprofs.com forward slash MP today. Now, it's time for one of my favorite sections. That's right. In the B2B news, where we talk about breaking B2B news or really important tips we find on the Google News tab related to you and your B2B business and B2B marketing. This week's title, well, let me actually just show you this week's title. This week's title is a pivotal year for B2B marketing. Are you ready? And is brought to you by none other than Forbes and D. Bloom. Hopefully I said that right, who is the Senior Vice President of Marketing at Antaraid, I guess. Anyway, Peter Weinberg and John Lombardo of the B2B Institute for LinkedIn talked about how B2B is the next big thing in marketing. Similarly, others posit that B2B will rev up to power the surge in demand for data and technology to drive sustainability, efficiency, and other major changes to our economy. With this acceleration comes competition. Artificial intelligence was forecasted to see a compound annual growth rate of 21% year over year from 2020 through 2025. Sustainable tech is expected to grow at a similar pace. 2023 is a pivotal year for B2B as spending in the U.S. approaches 15 billion on digital advertising alone. B2B marketers have more competition than ever. So do you want to keep reading the article? Then check out the link below when the show is over. That's right. All the right links in all the right places at just the right time. So let's get back to Michael Barber and his Marketing Smarts podcast episode. Uh, if email that is done right is successful, then I wanted to cut to the chase and figure out how to make that happen for you, the Marketing Smarts live viewer. So I asked Michael, how can B2B marketing teams start to build an amazing email strategy in 2023 and beyond? Now, listen up. There's a lot to unpack depending on where you are with your email marketing journey. But here is what Michael had to say. There's a lot to unpack there. I think I would start at an understanding of, do we understand what our audience is actually doing with our current campaigns or our current content, right? If we don't have email, then we need to understand what's the relationship that they have with our products and services. Or if we do have email in place already is, what are they finding most interesting? And then we need to potentially back that up with zero party data and ask them that question for our engaged subscribers. Why are you here? What do you care about? What's driving this relationship of, of keeping our emails in inside of your inbox. I think that starts the base of your strategy because that just informs so much from a design perspective, from a content perspective, from a cadence perspective, from determining maybe if you have some missing automations or drips that you need to build uh, around your email strategy. So as, I, as I'm thinking about how to advise B2B teams for 2022 and beyond, it's really, really, really starting at that audience level and understanding what do they care about why do they care about and then building email programs from top to bottom from what you put in your from name through the subject line through the preheader through the content itself that builds back to understanding what that subscriber is interested in and why they are a subscriber so that you can reinforce that relationship over and over again i have to ask have you ever audited your email have you ever audited your email strategy? I don't know. Heck, have you even ever audited your audience to understand what they are interested in, why they are subscribed in the first place? When you take the time to know and understand these things that will help you modify your message, design, and overall email marketing strategy, 
to the point that we're firmly directed in the place and direction of success. Now, we'll get back to Michael Barber in a few minutes, but first, it's time for some dope. B2B learnings from the vault of marketing profs articles. That's right. It's time to dig into the treasure trove of valuable, valuable information and pull out two pieces of gold to help you be a better B2B marketer. Now, article one this week. Well, let me just show you. Article one this week is actually picking the right email sender name, brand or person. That is the question of the ages by Chad S. White. Now, perhaps the focus on empathy and connecting with our subscribers on a human level or all of the emphasis on writing in plain English using colloquialism, sentence fragments, emojis, and even slang, or maybe the risky desire to find a way into Gmail's primary tab instead of the promotions tab. Whatever the reason, some brands have gotten the message that it's in their best interest to position their emails as coming from a person, a human being, the CEO, a salesperson, a support rep, almost anyone, rather than their brand. That pressure appears to be the greatest among B2B brands, but it can also affect B2C brands such as Peloton, which has sent bulk emails that appear to be from its instructors. Done in the wrong way, this tactic can cause problems. Want to know what problems it might cause you? Well, then you're going to want to read the rest of this article, ladies and gentlemen, because article number two this week is market segmentation, where companies go wrong and why you need different advantage analysis by Alan Weiss. When you're facing a lot of competition, one way to understand the situation is to segment the market because a properly segmented market will give you a better view of the competitive landscape. It will also help you see whether there are segments that are, there are no competition or no competition is targeting. Also, since your competition probably don't segment their markets, they're trying to target buyers everywhere they can, everywhere they can, everywhere they can find them. Now, you would be able to see in which segments you could win. This article will explore segmentation, a highly misunderstood marketing topic. Segmentation breaks up a market into groups. The original idea of segmentation was that customers within the same group slash segment want the same benefits. In addition, segments differ in how critical various benefits are for each segment. For some reason, however, marketers have settled into simple but wasteful classification systems instead. So what do people get wrong about segmentation? Well, if you want to keep learning more, check out the links in the description below after the live show and get access to both Amazing Marketing Profs articles. All right. It is time to get back to Michael Barber. Let's dive back into this conversation of tips, tricks, and hacks for you, the B2B marketer, and your B2B email marketing success. In our focus to get you headed in the direction of success with your email marketing, I wanted to help you watch out for those nasty things that might get in your way, those things that might make you take pause and even say, ah, email marketing is dead. So I asked Michael, what are some hurdles you've historically seen get in the way of success pertaining to B2B marketing or B2B marketers and the emails that they're sending? <sighs> some good stuff ahead, folks. Get your pen and paper ready. You're going to need it. I would go back to this list size conversation, particularly around challenges that a lot of marketers will face is that for some reason, many executive teams will look at sort of reach, if you will, impressions or list size and the size of your list as some sort of moniker of success. And I think that is a hurdle that often happens when we're engaged with, regardless if it's B2B or B2C, that marketers may face is just having to talk about why list size is not something we should care about in the future. I'd also say this is the biggest single challenge that I see email marketers is sort of, again, thinking that us as humans sort of change when we look at our personal inbox to looking at our quote unquote professional or business inbox. It's the same person at the end of the day. They have, they have the same needs. They have the same feelings. They're motivated by the same things. They have the same values. They have the same attitudes. And so understanding that, hey, we don't need to think of 
B2B, especially in the inbox, I think, as anything of trying to approach someone in a different way. Sure, there are selective words. There may be selective nomenclature that we use because of the industry that we're in, because of the expertise of the people that are on the other side of that conversation in the inbox. But we don't just change as human beings. Like We don't react differently to different types of campaigns just because we step inside of our or look inside of our, our B2B or business-related professional inbox. So just encourage yourself to maybe try campaigns that you've seen uh, aspirational brands or brands that aren't even in your industry do to see if they actually impact your engagement with your subscribers. Did you hear any historical challenges of your own? Do we need to rethink how we have thought historically? Are we thinking of professionals and personal inboxes or professional and personal inboxes as different things as they are somehow magical different people? Be human, write like a human, test your B2B email campaigns and play with a more, dare I say, B2C flair? or messaging, you'll have to make it your own. But at least that's my thoughts after hearing what Michael had to share. Speaking of Michael, we're going to get back to some words of wisdom from Michael Barber here in a few minutes. But right now, it's time to turn the spotlight on you, the Marketing Pros community. Yep, time for from the hashtag MPB2B community. That's right, we search far and wide in the hashtag MPB2B universe to find amazing information and conversations to bring to you the masses. So first, make sure you are using that magical hashtag, and second, make sure you have fun and add value to the community along the way. Then we'll spotlight you or your crew on the show. This week, it's coming to you from Twitter, and it's from Valerie Witt, or at Valerie underscore Witt. She says, data, data everywhere, with an exclamation mark, by the way. Marketers are obsessed with collecting, slicing, and dicing it. But there's one thing your customer data may not reveal, your customer's why. To get a complete picture of your customer's why, visit and there's a link there, by the way, hashtag MPB2B, hashtag B2B, hashtag B2B marketing. I left out that link and what it was, but to check out that Twitter conversation at a deeper level, then check out the link and check out the description and click that link to check out all the cool things, the post, read it more. You can learn more moving forward. Marketing smarts viewers, I have to ask, are you going to be the next to get the spotlight? Remember, community, use the hashtag, hashtag MPB2B on Facebook if you do that, you're definitely going to be on this show because right now that hashtag on Facebook, woo! Anyway, on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter and get the light shined on your awesomeness in the next episode or a future episode of the Marketing Smarts Live show. Pro tip, it won't hurt if you tag me into the post as well. I'm at George B. Thomas on LinkedIn and Twitter and at Mr. George B. Thomas on the book of faces. Okay, let's kick it back to Michael Barber and some words of wisdom around this topic of tip tricks and hacks for B2B email marketing success. Here is what Michael Barber wanted to leave you with as far as some words of wisdom. OMG. Act like humans inside the inbox. If we're keeping this at the inbox conversation level or topic level, I should say, just, just act like a human inside of the inbox. I think the brands that I see do really impactful work um, in the inbox or they understand at the end of the day, it's just another human being at, that's at the other side of that conversation. So think about that individual before you hit that send campaign button. Say what? <laughs> Act like a human in the inbox. Brands that Michael has historically seen do impactful work and get success have paid attention to being human in the inbox before they hit that send campaign button. What does that mean, be human? Well, that might be another episode for another day. Have you enjoyed today's journey? Let us know. Use the hashtag, hashtag MPB2B on whatever platform you are joining us on. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. Head to the description below. Click on the link to the full Marketing Smarts podcast with Michael Barber and keep on learning more about tips, tricks, and hacks for B2B email marketing success. Remember, these were just a few clips of the original Marketing Smarts podcast interview. If you got value out of today's show, hit that like and better yet, share it with a friend or family, or whoever. 
to keep learning more, hit that subscribe or watch additional Marketing Prof videos on your favorite social channel or head over to our YouTube channel if you're not there yet. Or you can go tune in to the original Marketing Sports podcast on your favorite podcast app. Don't forget to become part of the Marketing Profs community by heading over to mprofs.com forward slash MP today. And as always, remember to be a happy, helpful, humble B2B marketing human. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Marketing Smarts Show next week. What'd you think? Did you like the show? Was it a good show? Well, get back to your regular scheduled day. Go kick some butt and take some names. And remember, be human in your inbox.